Hi Scorpio, I hope you're all doing well. So we're gonna do a reading here that goes kind of deep, that dips into the dark a little bit. So if you are here and you wanna hear all messages of love and light and <laughs> all of that stuff, then maybe you wanna click off because today I'm feeling this vibe with you Scorpio that you should not hide your power. And yes, you do have powers of light, absolutely, but you have equal powers of dark. That is your power, is that you are equal light and dark. Okay, Scorpio, I feel like you are in the balance. And when you have equal of something, you are in the balance of something. Uh, before I keep going with this message, there is some other message coming in for someone who's dealing with a Libra. Libra didn't exist <laughs> as a sign at some point in time. It was all Scorpio. And now where Libra is as a constellation in the sky is actually where Scorpio's talons used to be, okay? Where the, the claws used to be of your sign. So when Libra's in the dark side or in their shadow aspect, they can get really scorpionic in nature and lash out with those claws that um, they have taken from you in some way. Okay, I'm a Libra rising, but I also got Pluto on my rising. So this isn't about hate for Libra <laughs> or anything like that, okay? This is about knowing the power of who you are and how other people use your power. I would dare to say that Libra is would do very well to know how scorpionic they actually are in nature. If you think about them as a sign, as a balance, where do they get that from? Well, they actually get it from you, Scorpio. They get it from your ability to balance the light and the dark. Now, I do feel like you, as the powerful sign that you are, can choose between rising into the light and, and, and having a vision of conscious immortality for your soul, or you can fall into the darkness of oblivion. And just having that choice is what makes you powerful. The other thing that makes you powerful is you can bring others along with you for that ride. So you can bring them into the light with you, or you can bring them in the dark with you. And this is something a lot of people intuitively pick up and know when they're around you. They can see it in your eyes, right? Those scorpionic eyes. People see that, the depths of you and the power in you. And I want to remind you of your power because I feel as though there is something in your atmosphere or something that you are around that is trying to make you feel a little bit softer than what you actually are which isn't to say you're not light and you're not beautiful, you're not all those things, of course you are. But you are the night that prevails. And I'm seeing night as both K-N-I-G-H-T and also N-I-G-H-T, the night and the night that prevails through it all. You have a very calm exterior despite what is going on on the inside there's a world of chaos sometimes within you or sometimes there's a lot of love and joy and light inside of you depends on your mood and what's going on depends on where you are in your process and your ascension and your cycle and etc but it never really shows on the outside where, which area you're in. Are you feeling more light? Are you feeling more dark? Can be hard to tell at times. This also makes you powerful. You're the psychologist. You understand others. They have a harder time understanding you. And this is not by coincidence. This is designed purposefully by spirit by the universe. So what are you gonna do with this power, Scorpio? I feel like right now you are kind of sitting on a time bomb of tension. There's something tense. Maybe there's a tension between the light and the dark. And 
there's something going on here in your energy where you're shifting between how you want to work with the energy in order to prevent that time bomb from exploding. Okay, so we're going to get into your reading now. We're going to use some cards here. Okay, and I want to tell you, I had a Scorpio stop by the channel a while back. And they kind of berated me a little bit. Uh, saying that I don't know what I'm talking about with Scorpio and that Scorpio is so powerful and a high manifest and I'm trying to bring Scorpio's energy down <laughs> and you know of course they don't they didn't know and they don't know that I have an eighth house stellium my Mars Mercury Sun Moon and Chiron are all in the eighth house Okay, at advanced degrees. <laughs> and I have Pluto on my rising. So I'm very familiar with Scorpio energy. But that kind of sentiment where a Scorpio energy is unable to acknowledge how they can access the shadow, how they can access the dark, that they are um, tempted at times to go to that other side. A Scorpio that is unwilling to acknowledge that possibility within them is one that is not in its full power. Being in your full power means that you realize you're quite capable of going anywhere and that you can if you choose, light or dark. Sometimes both at the same time, which is a mind F <laughs> to other signs, right? They don't get that. Okay, Scorpio, <laughs> let's get into it. We're using these cards, Murder of Crows, they're dark. And not by surprise, actually, a Libra recommended these to me. <laughs> A Libra who I see is very Scorpionic in nature. I think he had Scorpio in his chart too. But I think it's just another good illustration of how powerful um, Libra can be once it recognizes how Scorpionic it truly is in nature. So that's an interesting debate to have, I suppose. <laughs> okay. So let's... Because, uh, you know, on the other side of Libra, just to say a little bit more here... Is Sagittarius right and Sagittarius can be uh, the spiritual guru the one who really goes down that path of, of light uh, and higher levels of consciousness and, and pushes in that direction so Libra is kind of in between um, this intense sign that's willing to explore and expose and question the Sagittarian energy and then the Sagittarian energy who you know, archetypically is not willing to listen to anybody else's perspective. So it's quite interesting. Anyways, obviously these are all generalizations. They're not personal about you. We're talking about the archetype that you're working with, the energy you're in. Your whole chart is unique to you, could change any of these dynamics that I'm talking about. But I figure if you're still here, you're resonating at some level or you're just really pissed off. <laughs> I welcome both. Okay, let's see here. Let's get some cards out for Scorpio. The High Priestess is your current energy. The Ace of Swords for what's going to surprise you. The Nine of Cups for what's ending. Yes, I feel like there's a little bit of going into this powerful place. And I suppose this whole reading is brought, I'm hearing brought to you by spirit, <laughs> like an infomercial, brought to you by spirit, because there is something about your ability to tap into the shadow of others or tap into that darker realm, the shadowy realm, which doesn't mean evil. I want to just say that, you know, so we all know that it does not mean that. But tar tap into the, the unconscious, the collective unconscious of humanity. Um, there's something here that you're, is happening in your life where a spirit wants you to know that that power is available to you and that you can use it in a very helpful way, not only for yourself, but also for others. I'm hearing there's an urge to merge 
I feel like you are going to be merging your energy with somebody or a group of people really soon. Perhaps you will have a choice of which direction you want to go in here. And I'm laying out the possibilities for you. What's beginning? Ace of Wands. Your advice? Six of Cups. And what you can manifest in the next three months? Nine of Wands. Okay, Ten of Cups at the bottom. Let's get into it. Look at this. High Priestess. That's you. Don't let anybody make you feel different or tell you different. Not that they really could, but at times, because you're so open and you truly are open to different perspectives, you could entertain somebody else's ideas of you, a willingness to kind of see where they're coming from, but don't get lost in their shadow because their shadow is not as powerful as yours. You know, the shadow of... Scorpio or the you know lower vibrational Scorpio as some people say I just saw 11 11 it is often categorized as suspicious sneaky manipulative lying blah 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 <laughs> you know it's not blah 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 it's true that does happen right that is quite possible with scorpionic power and energy but if somebody keeps telling you you are that way there could be a propensity within some to begin to adopt that point of view, that that is who you are. But just because you know through and through what manipulation and suspicion and all of those things feel like and the power of them, and you know when to access them and when not to access them, doesn't mean you are in that energy all the time. Like you have a really good awareness of what's going on. Hmm. I once dated a person who had Mars uh, in Scorpio and he <laughs> definitely used that energy in the negative form okay of like absolute control and sexual lust and like you know it was it was dark uh, little did he know I had an eighth house stellium <laughs> hiding <laughs> and so I was quite able to deal with it and I could have retaliated and stung back, okay, quite easily. But knowing that I could do that was just as powerful for me as doing it. You know, actually doing it would be disempowering. And I had the knowledge of that. But I know I'm capable of it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I know I'm capable of it. And so do you, Scorpio. You know you're capable of those things too. But just because you're capable of them doesn't mean that you're doing them, okay? Ooh, all right, let's see. What's this high priestess energy about the king of swords? Yeah, I mean, that's what we're doing here, right? We're just talking straight, no fear, right? We're giving it to you straight, take it or leave it, helpful or not, that's up to you, not, not my responsibility. And I feel like, you know, that's your energy too. I know things, I know mysteries of life, I know the underworld, I know the dark, and I can tell you all about it. And whether you want to listen or not, that's up to you. Yeah, uh, Knight of Pentacles, and this is the night that prevails. This is who you are. You can't help but bring these topics into people's awareness, whether you do it straight like this or, or in other ways. This is your energy. You prevail in this way, and you you um, teach people how to access their higher self by teaching them what they're doing with their lower or shadow self. It's not really a hierarchy like that, like lower and higher. It's not. It's a polarity. And where you really want to be is in the middle, in the balance, right? And of course, like life is a pendulum I'm hearing. You swing back and forth. You want to control that motion, right? Rather than it controlling you. And I'm seeing this is maybe the time bomb you're feeling, the tension that somebody else could be trying to control your pendulum. So this is, yeah, that's the message. Is come back into control of your pendulum, of when you swing to the dark and when you swing to the light and what that means for you. Yeah, Ace of Swords. 
this energy is surprising me too. <laughs> I actually started with this wearing this top with like a sunflower and a smiley face. And I was like, oh God, that's just off for this energy. I got to change into something darker, <laughs> right, Scorpio? I feel like you're going to surprise yourself. Like I got to show up in my power, regardless of what other people think of me. And in that smiley face with the flower, it felt very like, it's interesting. It's like Libra in the light, but actually in the shadow. Do you know what I mean? It's like appearing to be balanced, appearing to be super uh, soft and everything, but really underneath, this is what's going on. And I feel like you're taking away the mask. You're taking, not that I was wearing one, but you know what I mean. Taking away the mask, taking away the facade, taking away the, the um, let's make other people happy. And really showing people who you are. Ten of Cups, this is going to make you happy and it's going to draw in the right energies towards you. You have to live in your power. Seven of Cups, I feel like there's going to be many people here who don't understand you. But like I said, Ace of Cups, the job is not your job in life for yourself and for others is not to have other people understand you. Remember, they, they won't understand you. Maybe unless they're another Scorpio, potentially. <laughs> that could be pretty interesting. And let me know if you've had a Scorpio-Scorpio relationship and what that's been like. Be curious to know. The job is to open up I'm hearing shadows of light. I don't know exactly what that's about. Five of Swords and the Ace of Cups. The truth for people to see the reality of life. Reality is not easy. Life is not easy. There's darkness in the world, you know, and it's your job to, to speak that truth, okay, in whatever you do and however you do it and, and to yourself first and foremost, don't deny that. You're not a sign that gives trigger warnings, okay? And that's, I feel, a good thing because people need to experience reality, right? Rather than be couched and put in a bubble and say, okay, well, here's reality over there. I'll tell you what it's all about. Don't experience it for yourself. No, that's not what you do with people. You say, all right, here's reality. So don't. Two of Cups. Don't worry so much about what other people can handle emotionally. Which doesn't mean like you have no empathy. Not at all. It means that people need to learn their lessons. And sometimes the harsh truth is needed. Okay? You can't protect everybody. And you can do that if you wanted to. You could shield people from the dark and take it all yourself. But that's doing somebody a disservice. Some of you, in a real literal way, are going to confront someone or reveal some kind of truth here. And it ain't going to be pretty. And it's not going to feel comfortable for the other person. But it's what you need to do in the situation. Nine of Cups for what's ending. I feel like this is trying to be happy while knowing there's some big shadow element behind you in some kind of situation you're involved in. Ace of Cups. Be you is really what I'm hearing with the strength card. Be you. And I feel like somebody has been trying to soften you like this strength card, you know? Here you are as the lion. And somebody trying to quiet your roar. <laughs> That's not really going to work. Not anymore. You're not allowing that. Not anymore. Because you, you're the knight that prevails. You can't. You can't quiet you, you know? You're not going to shut up a Scorpio. 
Scorpio will be quiet when Scorpio wants to be quiet. Do you know what I mean? Okay. You could also find that people have a hard time being quiet around you. And that's because you're removing some emotional blocks that they have just by owning your power. Ace of Wands for what's beginning. Ooh. Seven of Wands. Well, if somebody wants to come along with you on your journey, if they want to ride your coattail, Scorpio, or they want to build an image of themselves off of yours, or adopt your narrative, or tell your story, they're going to have to go the distance. They're going to have to experience what you did in your life to get you to where you are. If that's what they want, if they want to be you, and I'm feeling like somebody here does, and it could even be a love interest here that you're thinking of. They want something of yours. They want your energy, or they want to tell their story based off of you, whatever, you know, like build their whole image up around you and your relationship and whatever, you know, they're going to have to go through what you went through that to do that because they didn't. So I feel like you're protecting your new beginning. I feel like you're standing your ground here. Your advice is the six of cups. See you looking in the mirror here and deciding which aspect of yourself you want to go with in this situation. We have the Hierophant. Tell me more about the Hierophant. Queen of Pentacles. Now, Taurus is opposite to you. And interestingly enough, that's where all those, you know, my stellium, it's in Taurus in the eighth house. So it's, it's a very interesting dynamic there. Um, I feel like you could access that Taurus energy here with the Hierophant and the Queen of Pentacles. You know, that softer nurturing side, that Venusian element that you have. And you do have it because you are joined with Taurus, like you share energy. In order to teach someone, I'm hearing a lesson, to teach someone what, Four of Cups, about what they missed out on, about what they rejected, their own foolishness here. Somebody thought they were in control in a situation until you showed up <laughs> until you showed up Scorpio now if you are <laughs> you're psychotic yeah if you're psychotic don't listen to this reading <laughs> I feel like there's a cross watcher here who's uh, a little nervous and what I want to say to you cross watcher is that this message could be yours you have Scorpio in your chart too and so you should own that power that's within you no matter where it is in your chart. And Scorpio would want you to. Scorpio res respects strong-willed individuals who speak straight-up truth. And you will get the truth out of Scorpio if you can respect their complexity. So I feel like you're going to take a softer approach here, maybe a lot softer than what I'm doing, to show somebody what they did. Mm-hmm. We got justice behind death. And the Empress. <laughs> Venus, Libra, yep, and death. Queen of Swords behind that. Listen, Scorpio, you're you're doing something really powerful here. 
Nine of Wands here for what you can manifest in the next three months. I feel like these birds are you and this person is somebody that you've been dealing with or someone you're thinking of. It could be, it doesn't have to be a one person. It could be a situation. And I feel like they're going to be kind of shocked here about the night that prevails, which is you. Five of Pentacles. <laughs> look at you as these birds it's like you're you're backing someone into a corner and i don't mean this in a malicious way but you're forcing them to see something about themselves okay and it is for their highest good i do genuinely feel like it's coming from a deeper place of love whether that person understands that or not Now, what about this exploding time bomb, the Eight of Cups? Yeah, you tried to walk away from something. <laughs> it's like, you know, in the movies when someone throws a grenade and you expect it to explode as you're walking away. Well, you threw the grenade and nothing happened. And it's still ticking, like the pin's half out of that grenade. And you still walked away without really finishing the job. So I feel like there's a conversation that needs to be had here. The Fool, in order for you to have a new beginning. Scorpio, this is one powerful last reading. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. I don't feel like an extended is necessary. Should we do an extended? Let's see, should we do an extended? Death, no, I think we'll leave it where it is. So let me know how this one resonated. I'll see you next time.